Hi, this is Scott Boak with Pacific Sotheby's International Realty. And today we're going to continue our discussion from last week. And we're going to talk about indexing. Welcome back. Last session, we talked about averages, mean and median. Today, we're going to talk specifically about indexing and how that's different from the averages and how it's another tool you can use to estimate value. The Case-Shiller Index was developed by a couple of professors, and it has since been transferred over to the St. Louis Federal Reserve to manage. Basically, it's an index of prices calculated by looking at the exact same house sale over different periods. So... With an index, you're not looking at prices. You're looking at a value relative to 100. For the purposes of this index, January of 1987 is deemed to be 100. That's the baseline. Everything else, so if we're above 100, then prices have increased since 1987. If we're below 100, they've gone down since 1987. What this number does is it looks at every house sale, and it's gone back way farther than 1987 to, to establish um, the, the concept. So if a house sold in 2000 and it sold again in 2010, that is going to fit into the appreciation from 2000 to 2010. And then if it sells again in 2021, it'll be calculated. It'll be used to calculate the growth from there. Now, Case Shiller looks at 20 markets. They have a 20 market index, a 10 market index. And then for those 20 markets, they'll do an individual index. So we're in San Diego, one of the markets that they do follow. So Case Shiller is looking at every single family home. They don't look at any investment properties like three plexes, four plexes, apartments. They're looking at single family homes. And from those, they're, they're, they're extrapolating based on what does this same house sell. So what, why is this Case Shiller important? Why is it more useful sometimes in the mean or the median? Well, houses change over time. Trends change over time. So Back in the early 2000s, we had the, the theme of McMansion. Everybody wanted the biggest house they could get. So that kind of skewed the median, mean and median because you weren't looking at the same house where perhaps in the past, the mean, you know, the, the average house had been 2,000 square feet. With the addition of all the monster houses, we ended up with an average of 2,400 square feet. So, so saying the market was up 10%, a little bit misleading because the houses were 10% bigger. Okay, or 20% bigger. So the case Shiller is looking at the exact same house and telling you what's really happening in a specific neighborhood. And so that's why it's useful. So whenever I quote prices, I'll always quote you the mean, the median, and the case Shiller because they give you three different pieces of information. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call, send me an email. We can talk about this more in depth or how it affects you. My name's Scott Voke. Pacific Sotheby's International Realty. If you know anybody who's interested in buying, selling a home, or talking about investment property, please have them give me a call. Thank you very much. Until next time, have a great day. Welcome back. I'm Scott Voke, and I'm here with Ken Reed, sales manager for Finance of America, and he's graciously agreed to come on and give us some tips on mortgages. Ken, how are you doing? I'm great, Scott. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Well, I'm glad you're on board. Here we go. Let's start because this is going to be the first of several videos I hope we do. Let's start with the basics. First time home buyers, what are say three most important things that you're looking for from a new buyer when they're going to buy a house and looking for a loan? The three most important things that lenders are going to look at are credit, okay, income, and assets. And basically. assets. Okay.